Populist, you are right. He didn't accept the 2020 elections, and he should have. So should Hillary in 2016, so should Brussels, and so should Westminster in 2016, and so too should Congresswoman Pelosi, instead of saying the 2016 election was, quote, hijacked. Quote, hijacked. Thank you. Well, that was different. Welcome back. Thanks for watching. Holy crap. You absolutely must see this. You're going to love it. I wasn't familiar with Winston Marshall before this, but he does a very entertaining job of absolutely schlonging Pelosi with the reality of who the actual threats to democracy are. And you just might recognize his arguments if you watch this channel. To Winston Marshall to close the case for the opposition. Words have a tendency to change meaning. When I was a boy, woman meant someone who didn't have a cock. <laughs> Populism has become a word used synonymously with racists, with heard ethno-nationalists, with bigot, with hillbilly, redneck, with deplorables. Elites use it to show their contempt for ordinary people. This is a recent change. Not long ago, Barack Obama, while still president at the North America, North America's Leaders Summit in June 2016, he took umbrage with the notion that Trump be called a populist. How could Trump be called a populist? He doesn't care about working people. If anything, Obama argued he was the populist. If anything, Obama argued Bernie was the populist. It was Bernie who'd spent five decades fighting for working people. But Trump, something curious happens. If you watch Obama's speeches after that point, more and more recently, he uses the word populist interchangeably with strong man, with authoritarian. The word changes meaning. It becomes a negative, a pejorative, a slur. To me, populism is not a dirty word. Since the 2008 crash, and specifically the trillion dollar Wall Street bailout, we are in the populist age. And for good reason, the elites have failed. Let me address some common fallacies, some of which have been made tonight. If the motion was that demagoguery was a threat to democracy, I would be on that side of the house. If the motion was that political violence was a threat to democracy, I'd be on that side of the house. January 6th has been mentioned. A dark day for America indeed. And I'm sure Congresswoman Pelosi will agree that the entire month of June 2020, when the federal courthouse in Portland, Oregon, was under siege and under insurrection by radical progressives, those two were dark days for America. Yes. Not, there is no equivalence of it. So, but yes. So you don't agree? And it's fine. You don't agree. That's fine. But it is not what, what happened on January 6th, which was an insurrection incited by the President of the United States. So you don't agree? But, but you'll condemn those days. Oh, that was different. But of course, all she has to do is robotically repeat the message that we've all heard endlessly from the Democrats and the media since J6. And I just always have to point out that Trump told people to march peacefully, and that's exactly what over 120,000 people did. It was a relatively small group of around 372 people that got violent and destroyed government property. And I wish he had driven home more the fact that these riots he's talking about lasted for the entire four years of Trump's presidency. and actually started the day that he took office. There were riots that targeted Trump supporters that took place before he was even elected. Unfortunately, Republicans are too dumb and weak to have used this insurrection strategy against the Democrats. Nor could they have, even if they'd have thought about it, because they simply don't have the institutional support or power to carry it out. And that's exactly what Winston Marshall is going after next. The point, though, is that all political movements are susceptible to violence and, indeed, insurrection. 
And if we were arguing that fascism was a threat to democracy, I'd be on that side of the house. Indeed, the current populist age is a movement against fascism. I've got quite a lot to get through. Populism, as you know, is the politics of the ordinary people against an elite. Populism is not a threat to democracy. Populism is democracy. And why else have universal suffrage if not to keep elites in check? And Congressman Pelosi is on that side of the motion. I thought the left was supposed to be anti-elite. I thought the left was supposed to be anti-establishment. Today, particularly in America, the globalist left have become the establishment. I suppose for Ms. Pelosi to have taken this side of the motion, she'd be arguing herself out of a job. <laughs> that was a good one. What about big tech? Throughout the pandemic, Biden's team, the FBI, and the Department of Homeland Security colluded with big tech in censoring dissenting voices. Not kooky conspiracy theorists. People like Dr. Jay Patacharya, the Stanford epi epidemiologist. People like Harvard scientist Martin Kuldoff. People spreading true information, not misinformation, true information at odds with the government narrative. Need I remind you, democracy without free speech is not democracy. This is a direct breach, by the way, of the First Amendment. Same platform which hosted the Taliban and Ayatollah Deaf to Israel Khomeini, they thought the president crossed the line when he tweeted on Jan 6th, quote, remain peaceful, no violence, respect the law and our great men and women in blue. That's a quote. You may be thinking now that Trump is a populist. You are right. He didn't accept the 2020 elections and he should have. So should Hillary in 2016, so should Brussels, and so should Westminster in 2016, and so too should Congresswoman Pelosi, instead of saying the 2016 election was, quote, hijacked. Quote, hijacked. Thank you. <laughs> what about the mainstream media? Let me read you some mainstream media headlines. The New Yorker the day before the 2016 election. The case against democracy. But that was different. The Washington Post the day after the election. The problem with our government is democracy. That's different. That was a whole different thing. The LA Times, June 2017. The British election is a reminder of the perils of too much democracy. Vox, June 2017. The two eminent political scientists say the problem with democracy is voters. That was different. New York Times, June 2017. The problem with participatory democracy is the participants. Mainstream media elites are part of a class who don't just disdain populism, they disdain the people. If the Democrats had put half their energy into delivering for the people, Trump wouldn't even have a chance in 2024. He shouldn't, he shouldn't have a chance. You've had power for four years. From the fabricated steel dossier to trying to take him off the ballot in both Maine and Colorado, the Democrats are the anti-Democrat party. I've been saying it. I've been saying it for 10 damn years. Ain't I been saying it, Miguel? Ladies and gentlemen, populism is not a threat to democracy, but I'll tell you what is. It's elites ordering social media to censor political opponents. It's police shutting down dissenters, be it anti-monarchists in this country or gender-critical voices here. Or last week in Brussels, the National Conservative uh, Movement. I'll tell you what is a threat to democracy. It's Brussels, DC, Westminster, the mainstream media, big tech, big pharma, corporate collusion, and the Davos cronies. The threat to democracy comes from those who write off ordinary people as deplorable. The threat to democracy comes from those who smear working people as racist. The threat to democracy comes from those who write off working people as populists. And I'll say one last thing.
This populist age can be brought to an end at the snap of a finger. All that needs to be done is for elites to start listening to, respect it, respecting, and, God forbid, working for ordinary people. Thank you. Exactly. I'm not as articulate or well-spoken as Marshall, but this is exactly what I've been warning people about for a long time now. They used to hide it more, but these days, they're just being open authoritarians because, again, they have the institutional power to do it. Removing their opponent from the ballot, imprisoning their opponent and his supporters with trumped-up charges before an election, information suppression and censorship, using federal departments as political weapons, using the free press as a party propaganda tool, limiting or abolishing the First and Second Amendment, which we all know they're gunning for, normalizing far-left ideologies and racism to one group, and flooding the country with illegals by purposely opening the border, all while telling themselves that they're doing these things to save democracy. These things are not done by the good guys. I've been saying it for years that the left and the Democrats are particularly dangerous because they believe that their actions, no matter what they are are always justified by virtue of coming from them. They always have a carved out exception to their own rules for this exact reason. And now they've carved themselves out an exception for authoritarianism. And just to prove how dead on accurate Marshall was about the elites hating democracy and the voters, check out what Pelosi said when she spoke. Of these poor souls who are looking for some answers. We've given them to them, but they're blocked by some of their views on guns, they have the three G's, guns, gays, God, that would be a woman's right to choose. And, and the cultural issues cloud some of their reception, reception of an argument that really is in their interest. What an asshole. Ah, uh, yes. The only problem with democracy in America is that Nancy Pelosi has political opponents that are allowed to disagree and vote against her. If we could just have one party and the other treated as criminals, then we'd be living in a democratic utopia, right? Oh, you idiot. No. So, who do you all think won the debate? <laughs> well, surprisingly and inexplicably, the Pelosi side won. After all, I suppose the elites wouldn't allow themselves to be embarrassed by a peasant. All right, folks, that's all I have for that one. If you're still here, might as well hit that like button and consider subscribing. I post on a regular basis, so make sure to keep checking back for more.